kind of a fusion of a dye and a pigment. And I think in our creative stamping world, having something that is a little bit different is what continues to make things exciting. You know, we've worked with inks and we've worked with paints. We did crayons last year, which I think people really enjoyed that uh, water reactive pigment. But to kind of bring both worlds together and have this new look, I think is very exciting because what this allows you to do is actually layer inks in a new way. When we work with dye inks, any of our regular distress inks, dye inks are translucent, which means we can see through them. So if you start adding colors, if you add too many colors when it comes to dye, you'll eventually make mud. You'll see color after color. But because this is a combo of kind of a dye and a pigment, it really takes on a whole different look. So here just shows a color comparison of Distress Ink. This is Worn Lipstick and the Oxide version of Worn Lipstick. You can see that it has uh, some pigment in it, so it gives it more opacity, but it also has more of kind of this white chalky finish. And I say chalky finish because that's kind of the look and feel that it gives, but this is a finish that doesn't rub off. This is a finish that is permanently sealed with Distress Microglaze, so for people that have used Distress Microglaze over their inks, they can also use it over their oxides to make them waterproof, which is very cool. On dark paper, same thing. You see a lot more reaction where that translucent ink is affected by our surface, whereas the oxide actually sits on the top. And what gives it this white layer is going to be water because in anything in the world of distress, it needs to react with water. And that's where you get kind of that oxidized look. When we're creating backgrounds, and I'll demo some backgrounds, the results are just ridiculous. Um, you're welcome to look at them, feel them, um, and you'll see what I mean about that smooth nature of oxide, right? It's like super suede and soft and feeling, but you have that kind of white oxidation. And that's very different than what we get with ink. And here's a, a great example. I, like, stamp with it you can do tons of stuff with it but this is a great example of showing oxide in the exact same colors used with distress ink okay same palette but that's going to be your big difference when we're introducing this product is the fact that the translucent inks that we have that ability to layer and the slightly opaque version of oxide gives us a whole different playing field and you can use them together as well you can have a little bit more translucency in one color and have an oxidized look in another color and that's what I'll show you but I also want to talk about the stamping. So when we stamp on it, it's just a pigment, okay? Even though this has dye in it, it's just, it works just like a pigment ink. You get that great opacity, we can emboss with it, right? It dries very quickly, it doesn't have any glycerin. But if we were to wet this, that's what gets it to react. Our color changes, right? It oxidizes wow. because again, it is reactive with water. So you, do you always have to add water? No, you could just stamp with it, have a nice day, like the color, cool. But if you're like, you know what, I want it to kind of get that oxidized, chalky look, a mist of water, and that ink just comes to life. Now when we stamp with it, there's also several different variations of what we can achieve from a stamped image, okay? This would be Distress Oxide stamped. Stamped it on a tag, called it done, okay? This one would be stamped on a tag, give it a spray of water. Okay, when you do that, not only do you get that oxidation, but you also get the dye, because remember, it's not a pigment ink. It is a dye-pigment fusion. It is both, both combined. So we get the pigment properties, but then we also get those dye properties that start to seep out. And the more water you add, the more that dye is going to react. But our pigment image remains stable. That's another interesting thing, because you think, well, if I keep wetting this, like my image is going to wash away does not your image stays what you're getting is that dye that's in that ink start to bleed out another cool thing if you like to ink up a stamp and spray it with water and stamp it it creates a beautiful oxide watercolor so you can use these not only with stamps but you could take a water brush and you could dip it right onto the ink pad or use your reinkers and watercolor with the oxides but your watercolor instead of it being translucent is going to have that slight opacity where we get a little bit of that translucent dye and then as it dries we get that oxide layer pretty cool and then this just shows stamping it so that's swiping it direct and that's imagery because for me I have I've been stamping for many years too many years probably um, and I've never used pigment ink I absolutely despise pigment ink I hate everything about it I hate the squishy ink pads I hate the glycerin feel I hate the gunk all over my stamps it's just me and so I've always been the dye guy like I love dye inks because pigments are messy pigments have to be heat set right away and but what I love about pigment is the opacity, and that was really the inspiration behind this. I'm like, I want an ink that is going to work like a pigment ink. And what's cool about even the pad itself, we're dealing with a felt pad. 
So this is the same felt that you would get in a regular Distress dye ink, but it is a dye and pigment. Okay? So we don't have that squishy foam that we have to deal with. So when we ink up a stamp, that's how we have all that detail. All those little inside pieces are visible because we're dealing with a felt pack. So everything you know about ink, everything people are like, ooh, but what about with Distress ink? Same, same. Can you blend with it? Yes. Can we stamp with it? Yes. Can we go direct to paper? Yes, but what we're gonna get is totally different. So let me show you that. You can work on a variety of surfaces. I'm just gonna work on uh, mixed media heavy stock, but you can see I can pretty much use whatever surface I wanna use just to, to kind of show you. So I'll just go in and play with some colors. <clears throat> and I'll start just work on the craft sheet. Now when I work with colors, I like to take my ink pad, press down, and swipe. One thing I like to remind people of when it comes to oxide is try not to swipe a color through a color. In the dye world, when I've been using Distress Ink, I'm like, ah, eh, don't worry about it, you can swipe one through another, because you could never see it on your ink pad, right? Dyes are translucent. But this, if I swipe green through there, that red will transfer onto my green ink pad. It's not going to damage the ink pad, but it's going to make your ink pad look ugly. And that might freak out a lot of people, so, right? So that's why I like to warn people, because you're like, well, you said on Distress I can do whatever. I'm like, well, you can, but you'll have an ugly ink pad. It won't change the color of this, but you'll see it. So. When I work on a craft sheet, kind of take advantage of your real estate. Put your colors in different areas. We can still mix them, but it's a good idea to not actually contaminate your inks. Now, it is important also when I'm swiping, I am pressing down. I told my class yesterday, like, look at my finger color in a demo, ever. If you don't see my finger changing color, I'm not pressing. But when you see that, I'm pressing my ink pad. And that's something a YouTube video or Facebook Live will never give you because you just see like the magic hands and I glide across with ease. <laughs> but really what I'm doing is I'm pressing because remember ink is a suspended medium. Okay, That's why we don't have to store these upside down or right side up. The ink always sits in an ink pad. And the only way to get it out is to press down. So like when we ink a stamp, we're pressing down. So when we ink a craft sheet, you must press down. Now let's show you what happens with this ink when we wet it, okay? When we wet this, it's going to be reactive, but also it's going to start to kind of, I don't know, illuminate, okay? It's going to take on this whole new property of oxide. We're kind of seeing that color come to life. And we can go in and just apply it to our surface. I just like to start with a little bit of color and we're going to dry it. Oh, it looks like dye's rubbing up. It's like a bag of Skittles on my desk. Like, I didn't even start with a brown ink pad. We will get that. I assure you. So another important thing whenever you're creating any background, whether you're working with oxide or regular distress, is you need to dry between layers, okay? Wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. Pretty simple, okay? So if we're blending color, wet on wet will always blend, but if we want to layer a color, we need to at least let that foundation dry. Not totally dry, notice it, it's still wet around the edges, but it's dry enough that I can go in and start adding some more color. And I'm just tapping it around. This is what's really going to get interesting. Now, obviously the more ink that you add, the more kind of oxidized effect you will get. The deeper the color, the more effect you're going to get. And the heat tool is really key to drying this as well. Uh, if you use the Ranger heat tool, keep in mind it's designed to be an inch away. So don't work up here unless you have all day long to dry your paper. And I also like the fact that this doesn't blow anything around. So every little drip and drop that I have, it stays put. Whereas an embossing gun, higher fan speed, everything kind of looks like spin art, right? Everything blows around. You can see already that oxidized effect that starts to get, see that kind of white chalky finish that's pretty cool. So if I want to add a color, maybe I want to just get rid of some of this sludge, okay? If you have sludge on your craft sheet, you're going to have sludge on your tag, okay? Or your background or whatever. I demo on tag simply because it's pre-cut paper, but really you can use whatever it is that you want to use. Let's go in and just add a color just to show you. When I go in now with oxide, I have the ability to put a color over a color. Remember this area was brown? And now you can see that that color sits on the top. We're dealing with a dye pigment fusion now. So that is one of the biggest game changers in this is the fact that I can layer a color on top of any color background. I can use pink as my top layer. I can use yellow and it will be visible. Whereas if you work with dye ink, you can't. It just becomes part of your mud, part of your background. And you can see that that blue, that broken china is 